on Network Africa this week, we focus on health, justice, and outer space. First up, Sierra Leone continues to feel the brunt of the Ebola virus, but thankfully, there's help. Some of them are coming to participate in the management of Ebola patients, but also some of them are still going to participate in the management of the other problems. Then Somalians come together to fight gender-based violence. We mainly targeted university students around Somalia to talk to them on how they can have a violence-free future. Speaking of violence, this violent woman has her day in court after this video goes viral. We are going to charge her with attempted murder because the actions of the lady, you, really, you see she really wanted to murder this child. And it won't be long before Africans head to outer space. Our mandate as a foundation is to support educational institutions. Hello again and welcome to another edition of Network Africa with me, Cynthia Are. We start this week's edition by taking a closer look at the health situation in Sierra Leone. Now the health in the country concerning the Ebola virus disease is said to be so intense that the Sierra Leone China Friendship Hospital had received 408 suspected Ebola cases in the capital Freetown in the past weekend. Here are the details. The hospital, which was launched in 2012 to boost bilateral ties, set up an isolation center to observe and treat suspect Ebola patients. So far, 143 suspect Ebola patients were released from the hospital after receiving 72 hours of isolation and treatment. Each patient was arranged in a single room in the hospital in order to prevent cross-infection. The hospital offers suspected patients bracelets carrying their ID information and bed numbers for effective management. Meanwhile, British soldiers helped the United Nations World Food Program WFP on Sunday, December 7, to distribute supplies to the people of Sierra Leone's paradise-like Turtle Islands, more famous as holiday destination than for Ebola food drops. Shabro Island used to be a popular tourist spot, well known for its thriving fish trade. But British troops and WFP personnel were needed to distribute 22 tons of supplies to hundreds of people in the Bonth district on the islands as Ebola hampers trade and tourism across the region. Um, looking at the island, um, for them to have access to market, they have to use boat and then they go to like Freetown and the other main markets that are within the country in order to be able to sell their products and buy food. But with the Ebola situation, this has been put to a stop. They cannot travel and in fact like the fishes they have which they have already catch from the sea cannot be sold for them to have exchange of food. So with this, the need is really there because if they cannot go out to market to buy, how can they have access to food? So on that basis, there is need for us to give them food so that whilst they have this food, they will be able to think properly and then the situation being addressed can get access to market. The rice, cereals, flour and oil distributed to the Bonth district were brought close to the islands by the British ship RFA Argus, Royal Fleet Auxiliary before British helicopters transported the food load from the ship to the shore. Countries like Nigeria, who have also been successful in containing the spread of the virus, have been a source of strength to hard-hit countries like Sierra Leone. More than 175 Nigerian medics arrived in Sierra Leone on Friday December 5, to join the fight against Ebola, the first of 600 volunteers promised by the regional giant, which contained its own outbreak earlier this year. The medics will boost weak local health systems that are also struggling to contain other preventable diseases, as Ebola discourages people from going to clinics for fear of contracting the fever. 
said Dr. Richard Cheketoneko, who runs the African Union's Ebola mission in Sierra Leone. You see, management of Ebola is complex, and Ebola has led to death of health workers in the different capacities, crippling the health sector. So these health workers are specialists in the different aspects. Some of them are coming to participate in the management of Ebola patients, but also some of them are still going to participate in the management of the other problems. For example, high blood pressure, diabetes. This is because Ebola has sort of crippled those other sectors. Months into the Ebola response, the Sierra Leone government say they are still short of medical personnel and equipment. However, they are very appreciative of the influx of workers from Nigeria. We need everything. We need logistics, PPEs and all of that. But we also need human capital. And today we have come to receive 104 volunteers from Nigeria, comprising of medical doctors, comprising of um, san sanitation people, comprising of psychologists, and all cadre of personnel that we need. This is really a welcome gesture. And as a government, we are very highly appreciated. The volunteer work certainly comes with its own consequences. For instance, the United Nations said one of its peacekeepers in Liberia had contracted Ebola, making him the third infected member of the mission. The two others had both died. However, it is a risk the deal worth taking. Now, gender-based violence might be terrible, but it's very popular in many parts of the world, including Somalia. It's for this reason that Somali women took part in a campaign to end violence against women held in Mogadishu over the weekend as part of an ongoing global drive to bring gender-based violence to an end. <laughs> campaign dubbed 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, part of a global drive, saw about 100 Somali women dressed in orange. The official color of the campaign attended a conference to raise awareness about violence against women and discuss solutions that can work for their communities. The gathering was organized by women's rights NGO Hope in Life International with support from the United Nations Development Program. Nicholas K., the UN envoy to Somalia, was the main guest at the event. He encouraged Somali women to do more to fight their rights. Three things you as the future of Somalia can do. Demand your rights for women's participation in political processes. Change this habit and custom of female genital mutilation and build trust and confidence in your communities. Participants talked about challenges facing women, particularly gender-based violence, poor maternal care, a lack of equal opportunities in education and employment, and female genital mutilation. Female genital mutilation is carried out on almost all girls aged 4 to 10 in Somalia and is aimed at ensuring girls remain virgins until marriage. But it can cause difficulties in labor and is a factor behind the high rates of death in childbirth. Some 95% of women in Somalia have undergone FGM, according to UN figures. Today, we hosted and organized 100 Young Voices Conference Somalia, an initiative supported by UNDP that has brought together a hundred young voices from all over Mogadishu. We mainly targeted university students around Somalia to talk to them on how they can have a violence-free future. Somalia has been caught up in chaos and conflict since the overthrow of President Saad Bari in 1991. The government is struggling to reimpose order and a new federal structure as it battles Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab. Around 1.4 million people, mostly women and children, 
are displaced within Somalia after being forced to flee their homes. Rape is a risk for many. The lack of rule of law, which lets people to kill and rape with impunity and misinterpretation of Islam, both compound women's oppression in Somalia. This year's campaign ran from November 25 to December 10 and highlighted the systemic nature of gender-based violence and militarism, which organizers say encourages inequality and discrimination and prioritizes weapons spending over funding for quality education and health care and safe public spaces. After the break on Network Africa, we'll be looking at another case of possible murder by a partner or spouse in South Africa. But in this case, the potential killer goes scot-free. Please stay with us.